Hello, and welcome to the final phase of the Kerbal Apollo 11 tribute mission, Return and Reentry. After separating from the Ascent module, the Command module proceeded to the burn point for the Trans-Earth injection, the maneuver that would put the Lunar Explorers on a course back to home. As a little side note about the Kerbal mission, Bill snuck into Jeb's commander seat on the way back in from the Lunar module, but Jeb shrugged it off, noting that Bill's seat was roomier and had a better view, uh, but we thought we should mention that. Anyway, Apollo 11, after conducting the trans-Earth injection, departed the Moon and the Lunar Sphere of Influence. There is no audio from Apollo 11 during re-entry, due to the blackout and other difficulties, so what you will hear as the Kerbals approach Earth and re-enter the atmosphere is the audio from the morning of the mission's last day en route, beginning with breakfast. Altogether, it represents about four hours of audio condensed. Assuming the Kerbal re-entry is successful, we'll focus on the Kerbal mission as its drogue shoots deploy and begin concluding commentary then. With that, please enjoy coverage of this final phase of the Kerbal tribute to Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, who returned to the Earth from the Moon on this date 45 years ago. Apollo 11, uh, good morning from Houston, over. Good morning, 11. Hi, uh, Roger, we saw you were up turning around and uh, we thought that you were probably eating your breakfast there. Just in uh, general, we'll probably start coming up with the uh, uplink of the state vectors and the target loads and what have you at about uh, 19050, somewhere in that area, and then uh, get you started to work. Okay. In the meantime, uh, while you're eating your breakfast there, I've got the uh, maroon bugle all standing by here to uh, give you the morning news. I'm glad to hear it. Okay, Apollo 11 remains the prime story with the world awaiting uh, your landing today at about uh, 11.49 a.m. Houston time. In Washington, House tax reformers have fashioned a provision which would make it impossible for wealthy individuals to avoid income tax entirely through tax-free investments or special allowances. Under the proposal, tentatively adopted by the House Ways and Means Committee, everyone would pay taxes on at least half of their income. Hang on a minute. Uh, Roger, standing by. Okay, uh... Okay, uh, Ron, we're ready to go again. Thank you. All right, Roger. Continuing uh, with the uh, mar maroon uh, bugle. President Nixon uh, surprised your wives with a phone call from San Francisco just before he boarded a plane to uh, fly out to meet you. All of them were very touched uh, by your television broadcast. Jan and Pat uh, watched from Mission Control here. The uh, launch of uh, Intelstat from the Cape was postponed uh, for the fourth time last night. The problem uh, was said to be a malfunctioning nitrogen regulator in the second stage of the Delta. A new attempt will be made to launch it tonight. The research submarine Ben Franklin, which is studying the Gulf Stream, set a record by drifting 24 hours from 10 to 100 feet above the ocean floor in 1,300 feet of water off the Georgia coast. The mission is led by uh, Jacques uh, Picard. Wally Shira has been elected to a five-year term on the board of trustees of the Detroit uh, Institute of Technology. He will serve on the Institute's Development Committee. Air Canada says it has accepted 2,300 reservations for flights to the moon in the past five days. It might be noted that more than 100 have been made by men for their mothers-in-law. 
And finally, it appears that rather than killing romantic songs about the moon, you have inspired hundreds of songwriters. Nashville, Tennessee, which probably houses the largest collection of recording companies and song publishers in the country, now reports it is being flooded by moon songs. Some will make it. The song at the top of the bestsellers list this week is In the Year 2525. Uh, morning Bugle, out. Thank you very much. Uh, your crew status report, 5.5. Seven, 5.5. Uh, Apollo 11, Houston, uh, Roger, we copy. And uh, have your consumables update if you're ready to copy. Go ahead. Now, uh, Roger, GET 189 plus 00. RCS total minus 1%. Alpha minus 11. Bravo plus 10. Charlie, minus one. Delta, minus one. H2 total, minus 0.76 pounds. Oxygen total, plus 17.6 pounds. Over. Okay, uh, that'll look like we're going to be able to get quite back on the flight plan. Not quite, just about though. This is Apollo Control at 190 hours, 34 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from the Earth, 34,622 nautical miles. Velocity, 10,534 feet per second. Uh, Apollo 11, Houston, uh, can you tell us where the uh, advisor assemblies uh, ended up there? Uh, we're going to uh, follow your suggestion and stow up under the right-hand couch. All right, Roger, mighty fine. Uh, break the uh, weather forecast in the landing area. Uh, right now it's 2,000 scattered, uh, high scattered, uh, 10 miles. The wind uh, about 080 at 18 knots. Uh, you'll have about three to six foot waves. Your uh, delta H is uh, plus 10 feet. And it looks like you'll be landing uh, about 10 minutes uh, before sunrise. Over. Okay, sounds good. All right, roger. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, all three loads are in. Uh, the computer is yours. Over. Roger. And uh, Mike, if you're uh, on the uh, loop there, uh, to uh, extend the range and a constant G uh, re-entry here. I've got a little procedure if you'd like to listen to it. Can I stand by one? Uh, Roger. All right, the middle is Mark. You to be with you in about five minutes. Sure, no problem. Standing by. Hi, uh, Houston, Apollo 11. Hey, Ron, I wonder if you could give us a... Uh, Good Navy explanation for this uh, Delta H term, over. Uh, Roger, uh, let me think about it and I'll come back. Uh, you too, huh? <laughs> right. Collins has got one, but I'm not sure I buy it. This is Apollo Control at 190 hours, 56 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from Earth, 32,447 nautical miles. Velocity, 10,876 feet per second. Apollo 11, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, uh, 11. Uh, we don't have to worry about it anymore. The altimeter out there is uh, now standard 29.92 but basically what it means is if i give you a plus 10 feet for instance that means you will hit the water with the altimeter reading 10 feet over all right i 
This is Apollo Control at 191 hours 38 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from Earth now 27,979 nautical miles, velocity 11,689 feet per second. Apollo 11 Houston, I have your entry pad over. You're standing by. Okay, I'm ready to copy. All right, your entry pad uh, area is the uh, Mid Pacific. Roll zero 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 one five two zero zero one. GET one nine four four six zero six two six seven latitude plus one three three two minus one six nine one seven zero Six four three six. Okay, RRT zero seven two zero fifty thousand zero eight one six. That's uh, oh oh seven twenty is uh is the time a steam pressure is picked for the bar RRT. And uh, 40,000, 0830, 24,090, 10,000, 0951. Uh, 11, Houston, uh, you started out right, and uh, then the numbers you read back were correct, but I didn't get your comment in between there. I said that uh, all I want to know is that first time, 0720, that's the time of uh, steam pressure peg, right? Yeah, uh, that's affirmative. Okay. Houston Apollo 11, Ron, I'm ready to copy uh, your message about the uh, constant drag level. Okay, Mike, uh, of course this is uh, in the event the uh, GNN and the EMS uh, quit, and you have to fly the uh, constant G. And uh, what we're trying to do is to extend the constant G range uh, from 1,100 to uh, 1,500 miles. We've uh, run this procedure in the simulator, and uh, it works fine. But basically, I'll go through it. Uh, just go through it, and then if you have any questions, uh, come back. But uh, it's the same uh, lift vector up until max G, and then uh, lift vector down, uh, and then modulate the uh, lift vector until uh, G dot goes to zero. Okay, this procedure is essentially the same uh, so far. And then hold G dot zero until you pass the retro elapsed time of V circular. And then after you pass this uh, retro elapsed time of V circular, roll to a gimbal angle of 45 degrees, and then hold this constant bank angle of, of uh, 45 degrees until you come to the retro elapsed uh, time of drogues. Over. Okay, it's sort of straightforward enough. Understand constant G. Uh, back up, back up procedure. Lift vector up until max G, then lift vector down. Then modulate until uh, bank angle until G dot equals zero. Maintain uh, G dot equals zero until uh, 
subcircular and then roll 45 degrees and hold until drogue time, or? Hey, that's mighty fine, Mike. That's correct. This is Apollo Control at 192 hours, 2 minutes. This will be the first time uh, in Apollo that crews have flown lift vector up during uh, re-entry. Uh, normally, uh, lift vector is down. However, we want to extend the range by 215 miles. So for a short period, about uh, a minute and uh, 24, 25 seconds during the blackout period, uh, spacecraft will be flown with lift vector up. The computer program for that is number 65, uh, up control. Apollo 11 is now 25,301 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity has increased to 12,263 feet per second. This is Apollo Control at 192 hours 48 minutes. Apollo 11 is 19,914 nautical miles from the Earth, approaching at a velocity of 13,695 feet per second. We're two hours 14 minutes 16 seconds away from entry into the atmosphere. And the U.S. Air Force C-135 crew will attempt to photograph this uh, re-entry of the command module. Aircraft designated ALOTS for Airborne Lightweight Optical Tracker System. Will attempt to record the uh, entry on 70 millimeter still film. Normally the Mission Control Center here in Houston will not attempt to contact Apollo 11 after drogue chute deployment. We will stay off the air and uh, let the recovery forces uh, attempt to establish voice contact if uh, for some reason Capcom does want to communicate with the crew, he will uh, request clearance from uh, the recovery forces before putting in a call. This is Apollo Control at 192 hours 55 minutes. A few of the entry event times have changed uh, from a second to four seconds. Others remain the same. Uh, here's the updated times. Entry, 195 hours, three minutes, seven seconds. Begin blackout, 195, 325. O5G, one nine five zero three three six end blackout one nine five zero seven zero zero drogue shoot deployment one nine five one two zero eight main shoot deployment one nine five one two five six Landing one nine five one seven five three. Uh, maximum G load expected during uh, entry six point two zero. This entry timeline is my kind of timeline, nice and slow. Okay, 11 Houston, Roger, it sure is. Uh, ECOM is uh, 
anxiously awaiting his uh, big moment here for the uh, launching sequence, Jack, uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, we'll be ready for that in just a flash. Uh, Roger. Apollo 11, Houston. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, this is Jim, Mike. Uh, backup crew is still standing by and just want to remind you that the most difficult part of your mission is going to be after recovery. Well, we're looking forward to all parts of it. Please don't sneeze. Yeah, keep the mice healthy. Uh, Kurt uh, is really getting bigger up here, and of course uh, we see a, a crescent. Bill? Bill? We've been taking pictures, and we've hey, got uh, four exposures to go. Bill? We'll take those and then back the camera. And the Apollo 11 backup crew has joined Capcom, Ron Evans, at his console, Jim Lovell, Bill Anders and Fred Hayes. Also, uh, Donald K. Slayton, Director of Flight Crew Operations, is at that console. Houston Apollo 11, we're ready for the uh, logic check whenever you are. We're standing by to uh, arm the logic. We've got the ELS. Uh, Logic on, ELS auto, and all the circuit breakers in. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, Roger, you can press on with the uh, sex logic. Okay, logic one coming on, mark it. Logic two coming on, mark it. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, logic checks good. Uh, your go for pyro arm. Thank you, sir. Uh, Houston, uh, Apollo 11 has uh, got the AGF and the AGF on whenever you want to make a conflict. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, Roger, you faded out a little bit there, Buzz. I understand you have the VHF uh, Simplex A on now. Is that correct? Over. That's affirmative, VHF uh, Simplex A, and we're uh, PR and VHF. Uh, Roger, mighty fine. Uh, we'll watch it as you're coming on in and uh, let you know when the intelligibility is up and we'll make a voice check with you at that time. Houston Apollo 11, I've been holding here in SCS control, minimum dead band rate low with the limit cycle on, just as a matter of curiosity if uh, you guys wanted some fuel numbers from that. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, Roger, we copy, and uh, we're, we've been figuring it, figuring it out. Okay. It's a pleasure to be able to waste gas. Now, uh, Roger, that's a firm. This is Apollo Control at 193 hours, 10 minutes. Apollo 11 now 17,158 nautical miles from Earth, velocity 14,633 feet per second. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, with a little uh, recovery force information, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, the uh, Hornet is uh, on the station. Uh, just far enough off the target point to uh, keep from getting hit. Uh, recovery one are the uh, choppers there. They're on station. And uh, Hawaii rescue one and two, the uh, C-130s, are uh, within uh, 40 minutes of your uh, target point. Over. This is Apollo Control at 193 hours, 20 minutes. Apollo 11, 15,854 nautical miles from Earth. 
velocity 15,154 feet per second. We're just, we're one hour 43 minutes away from entry. And here are the uh, altitudes at which the entry events are expected to occur. Entry at uh, 75 statute miles. Beginning blackout at 62 statute miles. O5G, 57 statute miles. End blackout, 41 statute miles. Drogue chute deployment, 23,300 feet. And main chute deployment, 10,500 feet. And with that, welcome back to coverage of the Kerbal Tribute Mission, as the Kerbals have reported that their drogue chutes are open, and so the mission seems to be coming to a successful conclusion at this point. We will wait for word that wait for word that uh, the main chutes are deployed, of course. Re-entry periapsis was 62.5 kilometers, and that was appropriate for a uh, re-entry that did not skip up again. In other words, there was no uh, gain in altitude or appreciable gain in altitude. Um, and the spacecraft held above 60 kilometers for an extended period of time before dropping below that altitude. Uh, it was calculated that 63 to 64 kilometers would be appropriate for a slight bounce up, which would cool the heat shield. Uh, however, 65 kilometers would be too high and would require going around the planet again before re-entering, and that of course would be a very dangerous maneuver because of g-forces and also overheating. Jeb reported issues with the attempt to use the command pod as a lifting body, saying that for some reason the mass offset was not working to lift the nose, despite his best efforts to push it using the RCS. Fortunately that didn't cause excessive heating, though it uh, did lead to slightly higher G load on the Kerbals than the Apollo 11 mission faced. Uh, nothing the Kerbals couldn't handle though, as we continue to Pay attention as the Kerbals now descend below a thousand kilometers now, waiting for main parachute deployment here. And yes, we see uh, main main chute deployment. <laughs> Descent is now slowed to 12 meters per second as the three main chutes are confirmed to be deployed and and the Kerbal mission is safely drifting towards the surface. It seems as if the flotation devices on the capsule have also deployed. Current location is in the Pacific Ocean, west of Taiwan, and uh, we have reports of splashdown. The Kerbals report that the capsule is not upright, and in fact spinned around quite a lot upon splashing into the ocean. There doesn't seem to be any immediate danger. This might be related to the capsule's mass offset problem, but uh, we can't really be sure here. It shouldn't complicate recovery. Though it might make it slightly uncomfortable in the capsule 
until recovery forces are able to make their way I to the mission. Yet. Jeb is attempting to write the capsule using the RCS, but that has a low probability of success. But uh, he'll keep trying until he's close to running out of the RCS fuel. of a strange happening to occur right at the end of the mission. After all, a very successful mission by all accounts. Uh, the Kerbals did superbly in in the reenactment of the Apollo 11 mission to, to a close approximation if not a perfect perfect replica. seems like uh, they've got it upright but there's still a bit of a bit of a yaw going on there very strange uh, Jeb reports that he doesn't think that there's uh, much he can do right now and uh, even though it looks upright it keeps sliding around. Possibly turbulent waters in the Pacific. However, I think I think it's uh, safe to say that the Kerbals will be recovered safely. And this tribute mission was a success. And so, in this chaos of communication between Mission Control and the capsule and all the Kerbals complaining about about the situation, uh, we will thank you for watching the Apollo 11 tribute mission. We hope you enjoyed coverage of the mission and that you will join us for future future exploits of Jeb, Bill, Bob Kerman, and the rest of the Kerbals in Kerbal Space Program. So, with that, uh, this is the Apollo 11 Tribute Mission, signing off.